So, uh, in the last class, if you have observed very carefully, hmm, I did give you uh, three different definitions of force, I mean speed. So, one of them, I mean, uh, all the three were correct, but one of those definitions, uh, you know, where I said a rate of change of position. Okay, that is most approaching and I am sure all of you can understand that. So now, henceforth you see, we are going to deal with all these uh, things in mechanics uh, with the help of vectors. So what I say is, when you want to describe motion of an object, that is say you have got an object. Okay, so you want to describe the motion of this object. So as you all know, so first of all, you will fix a point call it as a reference point and you know the significance of that and then the reference frame. okay so here we go we fix a reference frame right and now uh, of course it is three dimensional so you can say x y and z hmm? usually it is written like this and then this is the object now what we do here is immediately when you want to describe motion we will <coughs> we will now connect this object to a position vector. So in general a position vector. So you can see the position vector will start from origin 4. The position vector starts with origin 4. So with respect to this. Now the body is in motion. So that means it starts moving. So the body can start moving you know, and it will trace this path. So the body was here, the object was here at time t1, at point t1 at point P1 and later on somewhere at some other time P2 it is here and this position we call it as P2, P3, P at time P3, P3 and so on. Now here what is important is you see the same thing it is occupying different positions at different yeah. instants of time but this change of position is continuous. Okay that body is continuously changing its position and uh, what is happening is you see, a position vector is attached to it. Means the tip of a position vector, the general position vector is attached to it. That means as the particle is moving, the position vector keeps on changing. In this case, both magnitude and direction. So therefore, tracking a point, uh, I mean, uh, understanding that a, uh, an object is in motion is best understood in connecting that object to the origin by a position vector and observing the changes in the position vector. Okay. So you will be able to locate. Now you can now see that, <coughs> you know, in three dimension also let the particle go. So the position vector keeps on changing. And uh, soon you will be introduced to vector mathematics. So wherein you will be able to uh, do the uh, mathematics of this motion. I mean, you will be able to get the math model of the motion in terms of vectors, right? And uh, from there you see our analysis and understanding of the motion becomes easier and easier, okay? So that is the idea behind, uh, you know, uh, describing the motion in terms of in terms of position vector and therefore that definition that the, it is the rate of, ch time rate of change of the position of the body with respect to the reference frame holds very good, right? So I think, uh, you know, you understood. So, the first two definitions were the definitions which involve scalar quantities. Now you have got vector quantities. See? Huh, everything is same. So you see the path, you can see the path here. Path is also same except I explain. Done. Okay. So here we go. And then uh, we have also discussed in the last class about, uh, I mean, I have just introduced to you. I'm going to now hmm, introduce to you. Uh, some of the familiar forces, common forces that we come across, right? So first and foremost thing, all of us are familiar with gravitational force. So, you know, uh, bodies with mass attract bodies with mass. That is bodies with mass M1, say attract bodies with mass M2, according to a, you know, according to universal law of gravity. According to means uh, the rules or what happens, you know, the relation, the relation is defined by the gra universal gravitation law. Hmm? 
and I will be teaching about that, but I am sure all of you have come across that. So, universal gravitation law states that consider two point masses separated by a finite distance r, then there exists a force of attraction between the two which is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and the force acts along the line joining the two point masses. Right? So, you have come across this. Anyway, I will be discussing more about this. But right now, you see any body on the surface of the earth is attracted by the earth itself. Right? So, we call it as gravitation of the earth or simply gravity. Okay? Okay. So, you can see here that the bob is attracted to earth. So, if the bob, if the string is snapped, the bob keeps traveling towards the earth. And uh, now that the string is attached to it, the string has the capacity to arrest the body from moving towards the earth. So, this is only possible because in the string there is a force created called as tension force. Okay, there is a force created called tension force and as I have told you something about tension force, it is a self-adjusting force. So, as the mass of the bob keeps on increasing, the tension in the string also keeps on increasing and it is self-adjusting. That is the amount of tension in the string will exactly be equal to and opposite to the gravitational force. Right? And therefore, both of them cancel and the net force on the bob is zero and the bob therefore is in a state of rest or to be more specific in a state of static equilibrium. In a state of static equilibrium. These are all very important terms. You have to try to master these terms and use these terms while explaining things. Then your answer is more valid and uh, you know it is, it is correct. <coughs> now another activity is, well I will keep a ball, ball on a table. I am sure all of you will appreciate this. So, if I keep the ball on a table, <coughs> if I ball here, yes, <coughs> so if I keep the ball on a table here or right now, you know, I am going to keep it on the hand also, you can all see this. Hmm? So, you can see this if I keep it on the hand, then the ball, is there any gravitational force on the ball? Yes, sir. Yes, there is gravitational force, right, down. But why is the ball not going down? Because there is a normal force acting. Yes, good. So, my hand is applying force. My hand is applying force which is equal and opposite to the gravitational force. So, in this case, you see, in this case, this is a surface and this is another surface. This is the surface of the ball and this is the surface of my hand. Now, when this ball touches this surface, then in the nature, there is something called as contact force. This is in contact with this. Then, in the nature, a force called contact force is developed. Okay? And in this case, in this case, and this contact force, like tension force, is also self adjusting. Huh. But the nature of the two forces are different. The nature of the tension force and the nature of the contact force are different. Okay? Uh, now, let us not discuss that. But right now, we understand the contact force is developed. And this contact force, like tension force, is adjustable and therefore in this case it is so adjusted that the normal force the force because of the contact is in the upward direction and the gravitational force is in the downward direction and these two forces are equal and opposite and therefore this ball is in a state of rest or in a state of static, static equilibrium i suppose i made that clear you can read this hmm? Since the object ball is in contact with the table, there exists a force called the contact force. In this case, the contact force is the normal to the table and called normal. The ball is in a static equilibrium. So, there are many types of forces such as electric forces, magnetic forces, centripetal forces, etc. in the region. We will get introduced to each one of them. Right? There are many, some of them you, you will get introduced to in your 11th and 12th. Some of them already you have introduced to in high, high school, some more you will get introduced. And you will understand the nature of these forces, etc. And that will make it good. Hmm? Now, if you see, both these forces, tension and contact forces are self-existing forces. So, you try to understand, hmm? 
this is how the nature is working and scientists have unraveled most of the mysteries of this nature and at appropriately they have created concepts see now contact force is a concept tension force is a concept normal is a concept okay so they create an idea right and uh, they tell that look the nature of this is so and so and experimentally you can establish that nature see these are genius minds they first said okay uh, this something like contact force must be like this its nature must be like this and then they experiment and prove that what they had hypothesized is the truth and that is how science is getting established theories are being built okay any questions here sir in contact force uh, louder uh, in uh, okay okay in which direction is the contact force applied on the uh, object so we will come to that later we will come to that later so in this case in this case you see in this case the contact force is perpendicular to the ball in this case in other cases how i will deal with it is slightly complicated but i will explain but right now you understand that see even tension and all no there are a lot many things that you have to understand so i am just creating small experiment in that the role played by uh, these forces i am just telling you just that ha huh? it's a good question but i will explain that later on okay right because it's bit complicated ha huh? as the situation comes I'll explain. right understood right okay now if many forces are simultaneously acting on a body then the effective force or the resultant of all the forces come into play right this effective force or resultant of the forces is called the net force if only one force is acting then the force itself becomes a net force so here you must understand that you know forces are vector quantities right see now if you if i stretch my hand like this and if you pull me then i will get accelerated in this direction or at least i will start moving in this direction my motion is in this direction so i stretch my hand like this and if you pull it this side then i will get accelerated in this side ha now assume that i have kept both my hands like this and two people are pulling simultaneously that means two forces are acting simultaneously now what happens to me i will neither move this side nor i will move this side i will move in the direction of the result or the resultant so there is something like this that you have got to uh, imagine and i will prove that it is a truth that is this force plus this force is equal to this force is it is equal to this force right so in on the board i can show you that hmm, if i say this is an object and one force is acting like this f1 bar and another force is acting like this f2 bar then this body hmm, this body experiences a force this body experiences a force in this direction so f1 plus f2 this force becomes the resultant of these two forces that means this force plus this force is equal to this force ha huh. now this is vectorial addition right supposing this is 10 newtons and this is 10 newtons and this angle this angle is 60 degrees this angle is 60 degrees of course it is not saying 120 here assume that okay it is 60 degrees then i will conduct an experiment show that the resultant force will be equal to 10 newton i will prove that how it is right now you have got to understand this okay ha huh. if this angle is 30 degree and 30 degree okay then the resultant force of these two will be what will be 5 root 3 plus 5 root 3 that becomes 10 root 3 and how it is and all i will tell you now resultant force will have this much as the magnitude of the force okay and supposing this force is large force 
say 50 newtons and this is 10 newtons then the resultant force will be in this direction this will be the resultant force now you can conduct experiment and see if you want you can ask somebody to stand here and pull it you know then you can see what happens but right now you see this diagram itself should satisfy so like that i have shown two forces then there will be many forces acting on a rho t star punch then the effect of all those forces will be a single force right and that force is called the resultant force this much you understand at this stage how to work it out what is the mathematics behind it i will tell you at the appropriate stage right <coughs> Right. Then the push and pull by humans come under the class of forces called muscular forces. They come under the class called muscular forces. They also come under the category of contact forces because I have to hold you to push you. So I am in contact now. See, right now Earth is exerting force on Moon, and Moon that is why is in the orbit. Likewise, Sun is exerting force on Earth, and Earth is in the orbit. but there is no contact between sun and earth like sun and moon non so gravitational force is non contact force so just just know this differences right <coughs> now if the net force acts on a particle only then will the velocity vector associated with the particle change it means that its linear speed or direction or both can change now try to understand this very carefully around now this is difficult for you to imagine but if you trust me then you will understand this what i want you to trust is assume that this ball assume that you are in, you are we are all sitting in somewhere in space where there is no earth there is no moon there is nothing can you imagine hmm? right so that means now there is no gravitational force right so you see this ball you see this ball so if i if supposing there is no gravity there is no gravity and if i leave my hand if i leave my hand what will happen to this ball it will remain in the same position is it we see now the ball is falling down because earth is gravity is acting okay now it is now it is going down because gravity is acting if gravity is not there obviously the ball has to be in the same position theek hai so this is obvious now so i suppose you have accepted that now assume that in the same non gravity field this ball is moving like this can you see it moving right now i am holding my hand and moving now you can imagine that the ball is only moving my hand is not there can you imagine only the ball is moving my hand is not there. so it is moving here at time t1 at time t2 it is here at time t3 is here at time t4 will it where will it be where will it be in some other position t4 more about it tell me more about its motion you are seeing it moving you are seeing it moving p1 p2 p3 p4 these are the positions moving in the same excellent it is moving the same speed and in the same direction it continues to move like this uninterrupted Why? Because there is Because no, there no other, no other, no net force, acting, no other force. Acting. So what I, what you have to be convinced here is that, that if the net force on the particle is zero, then whatever what see now at present the net force on the particle is zero and the particle is already in motion, so it continues to maintain its state of motion. Continues to maintain state of motion means if it is moving with. uniform velocity it continues to move in uniform velocity it will not change but if it is at rest it will continue to be at rest so these are the two important states of motion the two important states of motion one is at rest and one is in uniform motion and these two sta states of motion will be maintained if net force is zero okay you must be convinced about it right so here you see that means now when i say that the body is moving then what will i what will i do okay so here is something that all of you should start doing now that is if you see a body in motion then you attach a velocity vector to this 
to attach a velocity vector to this. So I hope you are all able to imagine. So this body is moving, so we attach the velocity vector. If the speed of the body increases, then the length, of the, the length of the velocity vector will increase. If it decreases, this will also decrease. And if the direction of the body changes, then the direction of the velocity vector will also change. Is that clear to all of you? So therefore, now this velocity. So if I say a body is in motion, then all I have to do is I can forget about this object and I can only imagine the velocity vector. So this velocity vector associated with the body cannot change or will not change if no force is acting. So to change the velocity vector, it is only possible by external force. That means, you see, this body is moving. So if I apply force, then only its velocity vector will change. So see, actually the motion of the body will change. Now we are going one step ahead. We are, we are now, instead of telling the motion of the body, we will now say the velocity vector associated with the body. Both are, both mean the same. So the velocity vector associated with the body will change. That means the motion of the body will change. So the velocity vector associated with the body will change if and only if external force acts on it. External force here means net force on it acts and therefore the body's velocity vector can change. Understood? Right? So when will the velocity vector of a body change? Uh, when uh, a net force acts on the body. Uh, when it is subjected to right. external uh, force. So understood that it is net force. Okay? Understood? Uh, so your, your now thought process is going into a different dimension. You are going up and up and up. Right? Because with these thinking, thought process, you are coming closer to forming the math model of the motion. The whole idea is you have to describe the motion. You have to measure the motion. So, I am taking you in that direction. Right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> if the net force acts on a particle, then only its linear speed can change. So, you see the body is going like this. So, if I, if I apply force to the body like this, in this direction, in the direction of the velocity vector, then only its speed will change. So, what is meant by linear speed? Uh, linear speed means, well, you see, good question. See, now, good question. See, now you can see this, ob this object. You can see this object, right? This object. So, this is moving like this. So, you only see this body. You see, only see this. Okay. So, this one, if it is moving such that, you know, if it is a particle, then it is tracing a line. Okay. Now, that is one thing. Now, along with that, if it is rotating, then it is having both rotational motion as well as linear motion. And you should know. See, now if I take this object, you can say that it has got rotational motion as well as linear motion. Got it now? Now, here you have to observe this sentence very carefully. Okay. Very carefully observe this sentence. So what is the sentence written? If the net force acts on a particle, then only its linear speed can change or only its direction can change. Or only its direction can change. Assume that this particle is moving in this direction, so the velocity vector is in this direction. I apply also force in this direction, then its linear speed will change. Okay? Now, assume that the particle is going like that. At some instant, I will apply force like this. Okay, then what happens? Only its direction will change. The velocity vector, if this force is, if the force applied is perpendicular to the velocity vector, then patak its direction will change. And if I apply force, see the velocity vector is like this, and if I am going to apply force like this, then both will change. Its speed will also change, and its direction will also change. That is what I have to tell. First, you didn't tell what is linear speed Ha, see, lean, lean, see, now here you understand, here you understand, for a particle, it is moving in the line. So, its, its speed, I'm, I, I could have simply said the speed of the particle. Correct, it is not wrong. But I am making it more specific by saying that its linear speed will change. 
it is same if i say speed of the particle because particle will always move in a line so i am just making making make, emphasizing that and saying that its linear speed will change okay you need not have to use the word linear if it is a particle but if it is a body then you have to use the word linear, linear. okay now instead of a particle if this is a body say the body is moving like this ball is moving like this now there is a concept called center of mass right for this ball the center of this is a sphere the center of the sphere is the is where the center of mass is now if i am applying force here and if this force vector if you draw the line through the force vector which is called line of action if it is passing through the center of mass then only its linear speed will change if the see now let me So now assume that this is a ball. Yes, this is a ball with the center of mass. And if this body is in motion, what should I do? I am going to draw the velocity. Excellent. You will draw a velocity. So you will draw a velocity. Right? The body is not massive. Now, at time t one, this is the state of the body. At time t two, what is the state of this body? Its position will change to P2. But as far as this diagram is changed, is concerned, what should I do with this diagram at time T2? So the velocity vector will remain same. So the diagram will not change at time T1, T2, T3, so on and so forth, as long as force is not acting. See, that is what you have to understand. So this diagram represents the state of motion of the body at some instant of time. And if no force is acting, for the subsequent instance of time, this diagram will not change. That means motion has not changed. Huh. Now you see, if I if I now apply force to the body, if I apply external force to the body like this, you see here, this is what is this yellow color line? What is this line? Loud. What is this? What is this? Direction of force. This is not force vector, right? I have written like this and I wrote F bar here. Does it this is not the force vector? What the don't read too much. What is this yellow line? Velocity. Loud velocity vector. What is this? Force vector. Now you can see that I am drawing a line through the force vector and it is going through velocity vector through the center of mass. So now I say. The, so this line, this imaginary line that I have drawn, this line is called line of action. What is this called? Line, line of, of action. action. So if the body was already in motion with velocity v, and then if I apply force, such that the line of the the line of action, the force is applied along the uh, which is passing through the center of mass and also through the velocity. That is the line of action of the force vector and the velocity vector are seen, then what happens at that instant? The velocity, the, the speed, the magnitude of the velocity will increase. In this case, it will increase. Got it now? So this is what I told. Are you convinced? Huh. Now imagine another situation. So this is the situation. Right now what I have shown is, this is the situation. So the body is, body is here, the velocity vector is here. Now I am applying the force vector like this. So what happened? Its speed only increased, its direction did not change. Right? Huh. Now you see, I will the body is going like this. At that instant, I will apply the force vector like this. So this is velocity vector, this is force vector. Now what happens? Both the magnitude and, direction. and the direction will change. And if I am applying, see the velocity vector is into the board. And if I apply the force vector like this, perpendicular to this, then only its direction will change. That is precisely what I want to tell. Chicken? Ha. Now, my friend's question is: you are telling only its linear speed will change. Okay? And now see, now all of you observe. If this vector, force vector I am applying, it is passing through what? The center of mass as well as the velocity. What if I apply the force here? 
Now this is not passing through this vector. Can you see? Yes, sir. Right? So now, what happens to this body? Torque, ah, torque is created. So its linear speed will change. The body can also rotate. No, that's what I said. So therefore, here if you take a particle, then there is no question of torque. So in that case, it is very simple to say that its linear speed will change, or its direction will change, or both will change. Okay. Yes, if it is a body only, this word, you know, linear becomes more, uh, more pertaining. But for a particle, it is obvious. Okay. Good observation. Good question. Hmm. Huh. Why velocity vector is drawn from center of mass and why not force vector? No, force vector also you can draw center of mass. I am just going like this. See, see now these vectors, you know, they are transposable. That means now, you see, this body is there. I can show the velocity vector like this. Or I can show the velocity vector. I can show the force vector like this. Or I can show the force vector like this. But it, or I can show like this. This is the velocity vector, and this is the force vector. I can show. Like so you can move the vector wherever you want, convenient. You can place it. All are giving the same meaning. All are giving the same results and same meaning. Sir, so what is the line? Uh, the line of action is the straight line passing through the vector. Supposing I say this is the vector. A line passing through this. Is called, line passing through this is called line, line of action for this vector. Line of action is for one vector. For this vector, this is the line of action. Uh, ask. There are many vectors. Uh, many vectors, many lines of action. Many lines of action. So now you see. For this body, there is velocity vector is like this. Then you are applying force vector like this. Then you see the line of action of this is like this, the line of action of this is like this. This line of action is simply a line passing through. It is different. Ha. This is a special case where the line of action for both the vectors is coinciding. And therefore, it is easy to say that it's only linear speed will change. If the line of action is not same, then definitely the linear speed, only the linear speed will not change, its direction will also change or whatever it is. So you see these concepts of vectors, representing it as vectors, representing the force as vectors and the concept of line of action makes it clear. So next time when I write something, like consider a body in motion, then immediately your mind's hand will look at that body and you will draw a velocity vector. A force vector is passing, a force vector is, is uh, a force acts on a body such that the line of action of the force vector and the velocity vector are coinciding, are co collinear. Then immediately you can say that, well, the particle is performing I mean, the, the change in the, this one will be linear motion. Huh. Here, one more condition I forgot. Now, the velocity vector associated with the body is, when you say the body is in motion, that means now the velocity vector attached to that body is attached to the center of mass of the body. Understood? The velocity vector is attached to the center of mass of the body. Of course, I have drawn like this, but the better way to draw is like this. Now, if the force vector is collinear with the velocity vector, then, then what happens? If the force vector is collinear with the velocity vector, what happens? The direction will not change. See, uh, the direction will not change. Huh. So, better than using negative words, use positive words, no. Only the, Only the linear the speed will change. The direction will not change. Got it now? Huh. So, the linear speed will change means what? If it is acting in the direction. Excellent. If it is acting in the direction of the velocity, its speed will increase. If it is opposite to that, then what happens? It will decrease. Yes. Huh. At, that at that instant, at that instant, 
the body will decelerate so if the force vector is collinear and in the same direction as the velocity vector then it will it will accelerate if the force vector is in opposition to the is in opposite direction but collinear with the velocity vector then it will decelerate at that instant of time uh, now you should not say i am applying that from time t1 to t2 what will happen that we are not discussing at that instant what will and you know all these are instantaneous values they are not values for the interval of time so if force is acting for an interval of time what happens that i will discuss later and you should know it is all happening at the instant of time so a body consists of many tightly bound particles so from particles to body what is your body body consists of many tightly bound particles and you should know it consists of many particles which are tightly bound <laughs> if the net force on a body if a net force acts on a body then only its linear speed can change or direction can change or both can change or its rotational speed can also change see i brought out the difference so if it is a body then if you apply force then it all, it can also cause rotational motion but for a particle it is only linear motion there is no rotational motion i suppose i brought it up here an imaginary straight line drawn through the force vector is called line of action if this line of action passes through the center of mass to be explained later of a body then only its linear speed can change or direction can change or both can change and its rotational speed cannot change <laughs> if the force vector is passing through the center of mass then what happens its linear speed can change or its direction can change or both can change but rotational speed will not change you imagine now for this body if i apply force passing through the center of mass then only its speed or direction can change but if my i'm applying force like this center of mass is somewhere here if i'm applying force like this this force vector is passing through like this not passing through the center of mass then what happens this can rotate okay that is the idea so understood now see by using these concepts i am able to write in english in words and then it is easy for you to follow those words and imagine the reality correctly if i don't use these concepts then i mean something you understand something so these concepts are very interesting very important so you start using these concepts life will become jingal okay okay can i continue right see i am making taking you in stages in proper steps so that your understanding of motion becomes clearer and clearer now slowly and steadily you know you will have to now talk about okay see very complex motions motion of a cycle wheel motion of a machine which is doing like this all that you will be able to understand <laughs> right unless otherwise stated when he said that force acts on a body it means the net force so in newton's law when a when a force acts on a body right its velocity changes this is so that means when newton is telling that it means there is nothing around that body only that body is there and that force is there now if you start imagining newton's law on the surface of earth then you will always be in a state of confusion because on the surface of earth already there is gravitational force then if you say a force acts on the body which force so there is gravitational force and some other force understood so things become complicated so when whenever it is said in a textbook that force is acting that means that is the only force that is acting no other force is acting clear right okay right the immediate consequence of this force is acceleration that means if a force acts on a body that means the next instant there is acceleration it can be visualized that the velocity vector of the body changes 
changes in infinite spent time not not equal to zero that means now you see imagine a body and the body is either at rest or in motion if it is at rest then how will you imagine the body excellent there is no velocity vector as the velocity vector is there its magnitude is zero and if this body is in motion it has a velocity vector with the velocity vector so you associate it with the velocity good so immediately when i say this should come to your mind excellent then so you can imagine a body with a velocity vector and suddenly a force vector suddenly a force vector acts at time t tuck it acts now you should not imagine that the force is acting it acted at that instant what happens the velocity vector changes at that instant the velocity vector will change when the change means what velocity vector change means what either magnitude or direction or either magnitude or direction or both so if the the consequence of force acting on a body is that the velocity vector associated with the body will change and this one we call it as it is accelerated accelerated means its velocity vector has changed you got it understood acceleration means its velocity vector has changed ha huh. now here i am bringing out an important thing see now the body is small and the body is big there is a small body and there is a big body the small body and there is a big body both of them are in motion can you imagine big body is moving small body is moving big body means large mass small body means small mass big body means large mass means what it has more momentum now i they have i have i introduced the word momentum so far no so big body means it has got more inertia small body means it has got less inertia now i will apply same force to both what do you see the smaller body will uh, Or no, the rate of change will be more than the. No, rate of change no. See that is that is it. See now the change of motion that you observe in the small body will be more than the change of motion in the large body. Isn't it? See rate. See now you see you should be careful. Change of motion, rate of change of motion, they are different. So first observe the change of motion. At that instant of time, you will observe. large change of motion in the small body and small change of motion in the big body or in other words there will be more acceleration in the small body less acceleration in the big body because of inertia got it now understood right so acceleration happens depending upon the depending upon the inertia of the body in which way was the mass of the body theek hai right ha but what you have to understand is the moment force acts there is acceleration but change of the velocity that is significant change in the velocity you will observe after infinite spent change in time that means the change in the velocity will not occur instantaneously that is you will observe a significant change in the velocity only after small interval of time it will not happen instantaneously that is something that you have to know okay so see now what i am trying to tell you is like this right so there is a body and there is velocity vector associated with the body the body is passing m right and at the time t you apply force at time t at time t you apply force then instantly at time t this body will also acquire what is called as acceleration vector the moment force is applied acceleration vector is attached ha huh. but significant change in the velocity will take place after delta t time that is what you have to understand that is it takes some infinite small time to change see now you fall down you are running and you fall down. as soon as you fall do you cry you will take some few seconds and start crying because you know the effect of that fall you will feel and then you start crying somebody scolds you instantly you will not start crying you will 
have a pause and then start doing. So there is a response time. That's what I want to tell you. There is a response time that is associated. So be aware about this because these are all the finer points of these things that you should be you should uh, you should observe and uh, you should learn because your NEET and IIT questions are based on these finer aspects. So whatever theory I am building here is answers to many questions that have appeared in the board and competitive examinations. So they ask questions like this, right? So there is a body, there is a bob hanging, okay? At time t, the rope snaps, right? Then the velocity of the body at time t plus, I mean instant, next instant, what is the velocity of the body? As soon as the snap, a bob is hanging, right? at time t is equal to 0, the rope snaps. So what happens to this body? This body is accelerated. This body's velocity will change at time t is equal to 0. It snaps. It's, if the body is accelerated. The body, there is a change of motion of the body. Right? Its velocity changes at time t is equal to 0. It is accelerated. Its velocity will not change, but it is accelerated. So there are questions like that. So what you have to understand here is at time t is equal to 0, only there is acceleration vector. Velocity will not change instantaneously. It will change after delta t. So that was the question asked in mains, advanced and also neat. Delta is, uh, Small in in interval of time. Say it. See now the rope has snapped at time t is equal to zero. You will observe change in the velocity after t is equal to zero 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 point one second. But you have to wait for that time. It will never happen in zero time. So the question was asked in many formats of exam. But then if you say, sir, in which book it is given? You have to understand it while you are building the theory. I am using the word not reading the theory, studying the theory while you are building the theory. We are building the theory gradually. Right? And that, that is where, you know, your complete understanding of the motion is. Okay? Understood? Right. Um, sir, I have a doubt. Huh. Um, when it was not Means you told that when the body snaps, there is length. Uh, means the uh, when the body snaps, there is uh, more speed. So uh, it is zero. The length of the velocity vector is zero. But you told that it can show direction. Now. It can show direction. It can show direction. But what it says? Velocity vector can show direction even uh, uh, when it uh, when the body snaps. Excellent. Excellent question. Yeah. I will tell. You. I will tell. You. I will tell. You. Yeah. Strong. See now understand this. There is a concept called there is a concept called zero vector, null vector. There is a concept called null vector. Okay. Null vector or zero vector. Simple. So what is a null vector? Null vector. Huh. Tell me. Use your common sense and tell me. Null vector. What do you mean by null vector? There is no vector which does not have any magnitude but has a vector. Excellent. But not right. Not right. Approximately right. So a vector whose magnitude is zero, direction cannot be specified. Don't say it doesn't have direction. Direction cannot be specified. It has some direction. But I cannot specify. Such vectors are called null vectors. Okay. So, at some instant of time, this, the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is 0. But if you say it is a vector, then it has some direction, but I don't know what is the direction. See, now you are sitting here, you see somebody far off. So, you know there is somebody. You don't know his name. That doesn't mean he doesn't have a name. It's the same way there is a vector whose magnitude is 0. But then when you have said that it is a vector, that means it must have some magnitude and direction. Magnitude, you are sure it is zero. Direction, you don't know. But you say direction cannot be specific. That's called null vector. So that is, that is possible. That is possible. Right? That is possible. 
right got it right. all right huh. acceleration when velocity vector associated with the particle changes when speed or direction are both change with the time that is important then we say the particle is accelerating we measure acceleration at the time rate of change of velocity so you can see here mathematically acceleration a bar is equal to delta v bar divided by delta t delta v bar by delta t correct right? that means what is delta v bar change in the change in the velocity no no see delta v is what change in the velocity delta t is what change in time the time interval during which the velocity will change okay let me explain this hmm? now okay see there is a body now i will not start trying the body at instant of time t1 this is the velocity vector v1 bar of the body at time t2 the velocity of the body changes v2 bar at time t but it At time t1, the velocity vector was like this, four-sided, and you looked at it at time t2. At time t2, you saw that its velocity vector was something else. Did it? So there is change in the velocity. What is the change in the velocity vector here? The change in v2 bar minus v1. What is this? This is delta v bar change in the velocity, and this has happened when. During the time interval t two minus t one, and this t two minus t one we call it delta. So this divided by this, and this it gives rise to a new concept called acceleration. Understood? Ha. Then this is the acceleration at time t. So this has happened at time t1. This has happened at time t2. So this is acceleration at time t1. That means now, what you have to understand here, what you have to understand here is very important. So just by writing like this, things go wrong. So therefore, the best way to write is limit delta t tends to zero, delta v bar by Delta t is equal to acceleration at time t. Can you explain this? Um, if the time interval is very close to zero, but it is not equal. Excellent. To time interval t is very close to zero, but not equal to zero. That means at the very next moment you are observing. This. So that change is the acceleration. That is what I want to tell. Understood all of you? So acceleration is instantaneous, but how do you measure it? You measure it like this. Just like how you measured the instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity, clear? Okay, so that is the significance of this.